All right, guys, welcome to Kitchen Daddy. Today, we're gonna make one of my all-time favorite winter dishes. It's beef short ribs, slowly braised in red wine for about eight hours until the beef is just falling apart. Now, this is the perfect dinner party recipe because you can make everything beforehand and then reheat it when it's time to serve your guests. And, you know, if you're like me and you prefer to do a little bit more entertaining than cooking, this is a recipe you need to know. Anyway, let's get into it. First, let's cut our veg into nice large chunks. I've got four carrots, two celery sticks, and one red onion. Let's get a pan on a nice medium heat, add a splash of olive oil, and get the vegetables in. We need a good pinch of salt and pepper. Now cook that gently for a few minutes. Now they've got some nice color on them, we're gonna add one bulb of garlic, half a tablespoon of fennel seeds, a good pinch of red chili flakes or red pepper flakes. We also need a few sprigs of rosemary and thyme and a couple of bay leaves. Now let's move that all together. We're gonna to cook that nice and gently for a few minutes until everything starts to smell amazing. Now add a good splash of red wine and grab a wooden spoon and scrape the bottom of the pan just to pick off anything that's stuck to the bottom of the pan. That looks great, so just pop that aside for the time being. Okay, I've got four kilos, so roughly about eight pounds of these beautiful boneless beef short ribs. Now, if you can't find them, you can use any cut, which is great for slow cooking. So oxtail, chuck, brisket, um, and beef shin, all of those will be absolutely awesome. But if you can find short ribs, they really do taste fantastic because they've got this lovely marbling running through them. Right, let's cut those into nice big chunks because we're gonna cook them for about eight hours, so they will shrink down a little bit. And you know, when we serve our guests, we wanna make sure we're giving them nice big chunks of beef, don't we? Right, grab the biggest frying pan you've got. Let's get that on a nice high heat. Add a splash of olive oil. And we're gonna start browning the meat. Now add a good pinch of salt and pepper, and we're also gonna add a couple of knobs of butter just to help that caramelization process. Now this is a really important step when making this dish, because think of it like cooking a steak. So the more caramelization we get on all those sides, the more flavor we're gonna get into the finished dish. So whatever you do, don't skip this part, because this is where we're kind of starting to develop all those lovely flavors. So, in the end, we're gonna get a lovely dish which has just got layers of carved caramelized beef, sweated down vegetables, all those aromatics, some red wine. Ah, beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Okay, once they're done, we're gonna pour off all the fat from the pan and get that back on the high heat. Now we're gonna deglaze it with some red wine and all that means is we're gonna pick off all those lovely bits of caramelized beef that are in the bottom of the pan because that is mucho flavor. That is what we want and we want that into our braising liquid, not going down the kitchen sink. Okay, grab your slow cooker and we're gonna start by adding the beef in first of all. Now let's add the red wine from the frying pan. Cover all of that with those lovely vegetables. Let's add the rest of that bottle of wine and then we're gonna to top that up with water until everything's completely submerged. Now grab some parchment paper or some greaseproof paper. We're gonna make a little hole in the center of it and sit that on top of the liquid. Now get your slow cooker on its lowest temperature setting. We're gonna cook this for eight hours without a lid on and a little bit of warning, your house is gonna smell amazing. Okay, the beef is finished cooking. I've let that cool down completely, which has taken an extra couple of hours. So make sure you do factor that in when you're, you know, you're planning to cook this. The next couple of steps are what's gonna transform this from a kind of home crock pot uh, meal into something that you could expect to find in a restaurant. So we're gonna start by removing all the beef from the liquid. Then we're gonna pass all the vegetables and the liquid through a sieve. Now, we're not gonna use the vegetables in the finished dish, so you could either separate them from the herbs and eat them, or you could just discard them, so up to you. Let's get the liquid back on the stove. We're gonna bring that up to simmering point, and then using a ladle, we're gonna skim the surface of the liquid to remove any fat that's kind of boiled to the top. So this next step is really important. We're gonna bring the sauce up to the boil, and we're gonna let that boil down until it's reduced by half. And you sometimes hear chefs talk about this quite a bit as a sauce reduction. And all it is, is a real simple technique because as the sauce reduces, 
it intensifies in flavor and it gets that lovely kind of sticky viscosity that you get in restaurant sauces. Um, so a real simple technique to use at home. Okay, the sauce is reduced, the beef is cooked, so this finishes all the cooks and then we can just get everything in the fridge and keep that there until you're ready to serve. It's the night of the dinner party. We've had a few glasses of wine and I'm gonna show you how to reheat the beef and serve the dish. Now get a big frying pan on a nice gentle heat and we'll grab the meat and the sauce from the fridge. Now when you look at the sauce, you can see it's actually turned to jelly in the fridge and that's exactly what we want. Now add that to the frying pan, let that kind of reconstitute into a sauce. Now you're probably gonna to have to season this properly, so give it a taste first of all. Then we're gonna add a little pinch of salt, pepper, and if it's a little acidic, we'll add a pinch of sugar as well. Let's also add in a couple of sprigs of thyme and rosemary, and then we're just gonna bring that up to kind of just below simmering temperature. Now, come and have a look at the beef. You might be thinking, what on earth is all that white stuff over the beef? And there's no getting away from it. That is congealed fat. And this, my friends, is proper cooking. So this is what you can expect. So don't worry about it. Don't wipe it off. We need to have a little bit of fat to go into the sauce because remember, we skimmed off the majority of the fat when we were doing the, uh, the sauce reduction. Now let's get the beef in the pan and we're gonna take about 20 to 30 minutes just to bring this back up to temperature really, really gently. Now at the same time, grab a spoon and start basting the sauce over the meat. And we'll do that every kind of like five minutes or so. And this is another reason why this is such a great dish for a dinner party because whilst that's gently reheating for 20, 30 minutes, it gives you a bit of freedom just to go and sort out all your vegetables and side dishes. As the sauce keeps reducing around the beef, we're building up this absolutely lovely glaze. And you can see the sauce has actually got to that lovely consistency that we're looking for. Now you could serve this with mashed potato or polenta, but I've decided to serve a really awesome mac and cheese, which I'll post next week. So I'll come back and put a link in the description box below. Now I've also cooked off some kale and it's time to plate up. Guys, I love making this dish for dinner parties. Everyone I've served it to absolutely loves it because the beef is so meltingly tender. The sauce is just packed full of flavor. And uh, what I love about it is it's a kind of restaurant style dish, which I think is achievable at home. I will be back next Monday with an awesome mac and cheese recipe and a massive thanks to all of you guys who recently joined from Jamie Oliver from Life of Dad or just find him on the internet. Really, really grateful for all your support. So thanks very much again. Cheers, guys. Bye-bye.